Hi everyone, this is Steve. Uh, this episode was just going to be a quick update on kind of what to expect with the podcast, and um, it ended up being way longer than I thought it would be. So the point of it was to just let you know that the podcast episodes will be coming out a bit intermittently. Um, I'm trying to get them out every other week, but it's not been happening, and it's not going to happen probably consistently for the next few weeks or months. And I'll explain why, and if you're interested, you can listen. And if not, that's really all I was trying to say, <laughs> um, and that I do get your emails, and that I will get back to you, and that I'm looking forward to the next interview, but I'm not quite sure when that's going to be. So if you want to know kind of what's been going on, it's kind of been a big deal for me um, in my personal life, and for Chrissy and I, um, and so it's re- it's really related um, to, to my deconversion 15 years ago. And I'm still feeling the impacts of it today. And um, this is kind of stuff that's been going on that I haven't been able to really talk about. Um, as much as I try to just be really open about everything, this is just, you know, what it has to do with your career. Um, it's just not something you can openly talk about on a podcast, always. So, um, but I do today. So if you're interested in that, listen. And if not, um, I will get the next episode out as soon as I can. And I will talk to you soon. For those of you who are sticking around, here's my update. Hi everyone, this is Steve. I wanted to do one of those quick little update episodes to let everyone know what to expect from the podcast in the coming weeks and possibly the coming months. I also kind of wanted to share a little bit about what's some some positive news um, in my life that I was excited about, but uh, it's also pretty significant for me, and so I just thought this would be a great place to share with all of you. And also kind of explain um, kind of the path I've been taking uh, since since deconverting 15 years ago now, which is an almost 15 years ago, which is crazy. So as many of you know, the last year has been a really eventful year for us and um, really high highs and really low lows. Um, last year started with me finding out, well... So 2019 started with me having surgery for thyroid cancer. Uh, I found out I had it a few months prior to that, but that's how the year started. And I, uh, that was really difficult. That was a dip, that was difficult news to, to process. And, uh, even though the outlook is great and, um, I'm healthy and, and all that, uh, it was really difficult to to work through that. That was early last year, and then we had several family vacations that um, we were able to take, and those are some amazing um, trips, and those are some really high highs and and wonderful wonderful things. But uh, we also moved twice. <laughs> um, that was really uh, that was really stressful, and that's you know as all of you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, we moved first to an apartment kind of as an in-between and then eventually moved to our, our home now that, that we've been in since about mid-December, uh, which is great. And that's all over. And I'm so happy, uh, to not have to move stuff anymore, but something that, uh, I've not mentioned at all, um, that has been a significant part of my life since I deconverted back in 2005 is this whole idea about, um, and it comes up from time to time in the interviews, uh, losing, You know, for those of us who were going to work for the church or were married to someone who was going to work for the church, either as a missionary or a pastor or in in some kind of capacity, or they felt called by God to do something. Um, For those of us who were in that boat, uh, one of the biggest struggles a lot of us uh, experience is the loss of calling, the loss of purpose, the loss of um, a career plan. And for me, that started in 2005 when I realized I wasn't Christian. I realized I couldn't be a pastor, and I was just about to start my senior year of college to finish my my bachelor's degree in biblical studies to then be a pastor. So I knew I had one year to go, and now that plan was out the window. And it pretty much threw my life into a tailspin in our life, Chrissy and me and the boys. Um, You know, we had spent these four years uh, going to school while raising kids and then it was it was all with a purpose of, of having a job by the end of it and then to realize that that wasn't really a possibility anymore 
that was pretty devastating to me and, and to Chrissy, especially since she was still a Christian at the time. So I had th- thrown around some ideas at the time um, back in 2005, 2006, when I was graduating, and I thought about being a teacher, thought about being a professor and, and going and getting like a doctorate and teaching at some university or some you know community college or something. Uh, and it quickly became clear that with two little kids, I just needed to get a job. And this is something that I, I've been really, really hesitant to talk about at all, um, just because, uh, well, for obvious reasons, but <laughs> you'll, you'll find out, but for obvious reasons. But um, basically, I just had to get a job. And so, um, and I know I'm not alone in this, and many of us have gone through difficult things like this before, but this is just, I'm just relaying kind of my experience. So I was working at a coffee shop at the time and then was able to get a job with the help of a family member at a health insurance company. And I didn't know much about health insurance. I was 27 years old (laughs) and got in in like customer service and I hated it. I was miserable. I, I worked the phones and I did that for like three or four years. And finally got a promotion to work in, in their appeals and grievances department, or it was their appeal. I think it was just the appeals department at at that company. And so it was a little bit different work. It was salaried. It wasn't on the phone. I preferred it. Um, I felt like more of an adult at the time because I wasn't having to, um, they treat you better (laughs) when you're salaried sometimes, not always, but in this case, that was true. And, uh, that job was was okay for a little while, and then um, that particular company actually started to struggle and lay people off, and um, the workload really increased on those of us who were still left behind to work, um, and it got really really bad. And uh, I always tell people that you know, literally, and I'm not exaggerating. Every day I came into work, someone was in tears, and I took my turn as well. It was that bad of an environment. Um, people were so stressed and so overwhelmed. Um, so it was just a horrible place to work at that point. And I've, I mean, if I can just be blunt, I've never liked the idea of health insurance companies. And I've worked for one for the past 14 years now. Um, and now maybe you can understand why I've been hesitant to even bring any of this up. <laughs> Because it could have bad consequences. But what's the good news is that I don't care and that I have options. So that's why I feel the freedom to kind of um, talk about this a little bit more than, or to talk about it at all. So I went from, so, and this whole, and so I went from, um, from that company to another company real briefly, then I got laid off. That's actually when I started this podcast so being laid off in 2014-ish, 2015, I think, provided me the opportunity to start you know, like building the website and, and learning how to podcast and doing all that. And it took me a really long time to, to get it going just because, um, I'm, I don't know, I just tend to be slow at things. So it takes me a while to kind of uh, learn something and then get it going. And then I'm kind of a maybe more of a perfectionist than I need to be. And then it just delays things. So, um, finally launched the podcast in 2017 within, well, let's see when I was laid off about six months later, um, ended up reluctantly getting employment with another health insurance company. It was all the experience I had. I applied at a lot of different places. I didn't really want to do any of these like corporate type jobs, Um, it just has never, I felt like, um, fit well. Uh, I don't think I've, I I do fine, you know, but, um, it's never been something that, that I felt good about, or I felt fulfilled doing, um, these different jobs ultimately, you know, like at first it's exciting, it's new. And then I just realized I was completely unfulfilled working where I was working. So anyway, I end up at this other health insurance company. My first day of work for this company this most recent company, I was miserable. I was so distraught because I just felt like I'm always going to work for health insurance companies and I'm never going to figure out what it is I want to do. And for me, 
all of those years, um, teaching kind of came up from time to time, but so did other ideas. And I just could never figure out what I wanted to do and what would be fulfilling for me um, as far as a career goes. And so I was quite miserable. And I've mentioned on the podcast before that I was really depressed um, in 2013. It, I hit a really low low um, and was very close to not coming out of this. Weeks after my low point, I got an email for an interview at, at, another, at another job, and it got me out of that really crappy first health insurance company. So that was like 2013, 2014, somewhere in there. And then uh, just a short stint at that company, like I mentioned, and then I got laid off from them, and then that's when I started the podcast. And then I got a job about six months after being laid off. So early 2016, I get a job at this this company that actually I work for right now. And I was completely distraught and frustrated and upset. And I just didn't, I hated the idea of working for another health insurance company. But, you know, what options did I have? And that's when I hit another really, really low, low. Um, things got really bad. Uh, I don't know what if it was a combination of the situation and my mental health, but I hadn't yet at that point um, addressed depression uh, at all in any way. Um, but it became very clear that I needed to quite urgently and um, very quickly set an appointment, thankfully, with a therapist and um, went to a doctor and it was excruciating those few months those first few months um, working at that company because I was incredibly depressed and distraught and um, did not feel like I could go on. And on top of that, I was incredibly angry just at the entire situation and where I was in life, just the fact that things unraveled the way they did. What was really horrible about the whole situation is whenever my therapist would bring up my wife and kids, uh, it was like, before I was treated for depression, it was like I couldn't even process how it would hurt them, how painful it would be if I wasn't around. And I knew intellectually speaking that it was a horrible, horrible thing to do to a person, to your family. One of the most horrible things you could you could do but for whatever reason I was so angry and well because of my mental health state I mean that's my opinion um because of where I was at not being medicated not being not having ever really gone to a therapist for long and being so despondent about everything I was angry and I was feeling very impulsive and just that combination of depression anger and impulsivity um I feel like it was a really dangerous time for me And so I'm very, very grateful, one, for Chrissy, um, also for my therapist, because Chrissy encouraged me all along the way, obviously. (laughs) Um, And uh, I'm so incredibly grateful for her support. Uh, And my kids don't know this, but just for my kids being who they are, (laughs) just being my kids, um, at my lowest point, the thought of, uh, leaving them behind was the only thing that brought me back. And um, so incredibly grateful to the people who are in my life, who I love and who have loved and supported me through this very long, painful journey. And basically, I guess I'm sharing all of this because it's something that I think some of us experience when we deconvert. We don't get to continue on the path that we had thought we were going to walk. And I think this applies to people in life in general. Like a lot of times things derail our plans, whether it had anything to do with religion or not, but it can completely put you into a a tailspin. At least that's what it did for me. Um, And so when I started this podcast, I was not necessarily in a good headspace. I knew it was something that I needed to do. It was part of my healing and it still is. And so 
you all have been so incredibly vulnerable and open with me um, via email, um, people who haven't been on the podcast who I've spoken with um, through email or through Skype. And then, of course, all of my guests that I've had on have been so open and so so upfront about their struggles. And um, I can't tell you how much that encourages me, and I appreciate that so much. Um, so I guess I'm just, I feel like I want to open up and be real with, with all of you as well. So uh, it's hard for me to do that because I, I think there are other people who do podcasts who are better at being, you know, wearing their heart on their sleeve and things like that. But um, I'm very careful about what I talk about sometimes when it comes to my personal life, especially when it's like my career. I just want to be careful. You know, you don't want to like lose your job because you say something you shouldn't have and someone finds out. But, um, and that might be paranoia on my part. Probably no one will ever listen to this who, who works with me, except for one person who I know. <laughs> Uh, who who will keep it secret? I'm sure, but uh, but anyway, I, at this point, it's it's fine, and I and I don't care, and I have a plan, and so all all of this is just to tell you guys that um, this has kind of been the journey I've gone on, and it's led to this point in time where, um, you know, even though I had thought about going into teaching, all the way back in 2006 when when I graduated, and that was a serious thought, and I really thought, you know what, I think I'd enjoy this. Um, it was the first thought I had when I knew that I wasn't going to be a pastor was, well, what I think I enjoy, even before I deconverted, was what, what I knew I enjoyed was like the preaching, you know, the, the, the teaching and the explaining the Bible to people, not the, like the counseling and some of the other stuff that goes along with being a pastor. And it was that realization that kind of got me started thinking about teaching and things like that. But then, like I said, in 2006, when I graduated my wife wasn't working. She didn't have her degree at the time. Our kids were two and three years old. And basically, I just had to go get the highest paying job I could to just help us make ends meet. And so I did that. And then you get stuck in this in this industry, and that becomes your resume. And then if you try to work anywhere else, you're not going to get interviews because you don't have experience in those other industries. Or um, I couldn't quit and go back to school. Um, my my family depended on the health insurance I was getting through that company and, you know, the wage I was earning, um, that was supporting the entire family. Chrissy eventually got to go to school in 2013. She graduated and got, um, a degree in social work. And, uh, what's kind of beautiful about that whole thing is that she, um, basically got to go to school and get her degree, um, while I was working. And then she, had a couple of kind of crummy jobs and finally got a really great job that now has better health insurance than the health insurance I had. And so now we're, our health care is kind of taken care of. And then it pays well enough that if I take a pay cut, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. And so for the first time since, you know, 2005 or six it's actually a viable possibility for me to pursue a different career. So that's what I've been doing. So that big, long story, part of it was I just wanted to kind of share what I was going through. But the other part of it is to explain what's been going on over this last year. In addition to all that other stuff that we are doing in the summer, I took an online course for teaching English as a second language. It's a TEFL course, Teaching English as a Foreign Language. And then this fall, I started to volunteer uh, reading with uh, elementary school kids during my during my lunch break once a week. And then I also started to volunteer on Saturdays at uh, this really cool uh, nonprofit charity type organization puts on this, this small little uh, get together where basically immigrants who are learning English can come and they can... Uh, just have conversations with you and and it helps them you know work out their English and pronunciation and stuff and that all sounded so cool to me and also I thought hey this is a great way to get experience like helping instruct people um, even though it's not like a formal teaching job it's just casual conversation and you get to know people and become friends but they're asking you questions about their English and you're you're um, correcting them and encouraging them doing things a teacher would do 
but also it's just awesome <laughs> and I love doing it. So I started volunteering at, you know, two different places during the week. I was taking this course in the evenings on top of doing the podcast, um, which you can imagine was pretty intense. Um, but I didn't want to mention any of this because I was still working with my current employer. Finally, um, even though the plan was, well, the other thing I didn't mention is the reason we sold our house was to pay down some bills and debt so that we, we could afford for me to either work part-time or quit and, and just go back to school. And so a lot of what we've, we've been going through and, and doing over the last like year or two has been in preparation for me to finally go back to school. And we weren't sure about timing and how that would all work, but it's taken, it feels like it's taken forever, but, um, but we're finally there. And the thing that, you know, I was kind of like lingering or I kind of am lingering at my current job for different reasons. Um, and pardon my groggy voice. It's late and I'm trying to talk quietly because my son's next door, but, um, (laughs) lingering at my current job um, because I wanted to be able to, you know, make the most amount of money I could until the last minute and save up whatever we could save up for when I quit. And so uh, in the summer and fall of this year, or sorry, 2019, things intensified at work and got really, really difficult. And I was given some some additional responsibilities that made it really, really, um, overwhelming for me. I, you know, know that there are probably people who could have handled what I was given better than I did. Uh, as far as like, just, uh, I get overwhelmed quickly with the things that I do at work, uh, with the job that I do. It's mainly handling complaints and people appealing, um, problems and, you know, and so you deal with negativity all day long. So when things intensified at work, it really escalated this process of me wanting to get out as soon as possible. And so in December, I began applying to several companies that allow you to teach English online to children or to adults uh, all around the world. And so what I'm really excited about and what this whole, what I thought was going to be a short little update has, (laughs) has led up to the whole, the whole purpose of this is just to let you know, like I was able to get a job at, at several of these online companies. And oftentimes you, you know, they're part-time gigs. And so I'm just kind of doing that on the weekend and in evenings right now, uh, with the plan to eventually quit my job and do it full time as kind of a bridge to getting me back into school to get a teaching certificate or a master's in teaching or whatever it is that I end up doing, but basically to get me to become a teacher. I'm not sure the age group I want to teach. There's several subjects I think that would be interesting, but I haven't quite landed on anything. Anyway, I'm really close to being able to to finally leave the health insurance industry for good, and uh, I'm not quite there. I'm still working there, (laughs) Um, which is why I feel like this is a bit dangerous to be talking about. Um, you know, on the internet, but I'm already starting to work. Um, I've already started doing some of the teaching um, for at least one of the companies. And as I kind of work this out and figure it out, um, I'll be working odd hours because some of the the people who I'm teaching the children are in China and some of them are all over the world. So the hours are kind of weird. And uh, to start while I'm working my current job, I'm also working this, these, these other jobs on Friday and Saturday nights specifically. So I'm really busy, but it's a really good thing. It's super positive. I'm really excited. I'm really enjoying it. That's an awesome sign, you know? Um, that was something I struggled with for years. Like, what do I even want to do? Like, I want to get the hell out of this horrible industry, and I hate my job what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? And so then I would just be depressed and, and feel crappy about my situation. But finally I found something that I've actually been doing through volunteer work. Um, and also now, uh, the last few weeks I've been doing some teaching, like actual lessons with, with kids. And it's been a lot of fun. And so this is kind of 
the beginning of a really, really awesome time in my life, and I'm really excited for it. So all that to say, um, episodes will come out intermittently probably. Um, I still have the goal of getting them out every other week, but depending how all of this crazy schedule affects my sleep and my free time and, um, and how quickly I leave my job, I haven't even decided, you know, I could put my two weeks in any time, my two week notice in any time. Um, but I've also thought about maybe waiting a little while for different reasons that might benefit me. So, um, benefit us, <laughs> benefit me and my family is what I meant to say. Um, but anyhow, so I don't know how this is all going to shake out over the next few weeks or months. But I just want to give everyone a heads up that what that could mean is that episodes don't come out every two weeks exactly. And that's why they haven't been coming out exactly every two weeks. Um, I know most of you don't care that much about that. And for some stupid reason, I do. (laughs) And it causes me stress when it shouldn't. Um, But just know, like, that's what's been going on. Like, I've been trying to work my way out of a, a career that I hate. Um... And there's been wonderful people I've worked with. And of course, you know, there's been great moments and, and good moments and things that where I felt like I've made a difference and stuff. So I'm not saying it was all horrible and bad, but um, for the most part, it was not a good fit for me ever. And uh, this is a really positive change and positive step for me and my family. And um, I honestly can't wait. I'm so excited. But um, this podcast has been huge for me. It's been so great to meet all of you, and um, I look forward to continuing it through this process. And as I, you know, move into this next kind of chapter and figure out how to go back to school, if it's going to be online, if it's going to be, you know, an actual school I'm going to drive to and commute to and take classes while I'm working. So I'm, I'm looking forward to fitting in the podcast interviews and getting the episodes out as I can throughout all of this, but just know that, um, sharing these stories means a lot to me. I love hearing them still. Um, I love meeting people who are going through this and hearing what they've gone through. And of course it always resonates with me because, uh, of my experience. And I appreciate so much the people who have shared, the people who are willing to share and will be sharing in the future. Those who I spoke with months ago, who, um, I feel horrible that I haven't gotten back to um, via email uh, who reached out and wanted to share their stories. And I said, yeah, you know, and then just things just got crazy busy with all the stuff that I've mentioned. And um, so I will be getting back to people. Uh, and if I don't feel free to email me and just let me just check in and ask if, if, you know, it's a good time to do an interview and I'll, I will be squeezing in interviews um as best I can. So if I can do it, I will. So don't, don't feel bad asking. Um, remember the email is Steve at vodpodcast.com. Um, and so I will be getting to those emails as I can, but I do try to check it actually several times a week. Uh, if not, you know, once a day. So finally, I just want to say thank you so, so much to all of you for being understanding and patient um, while I kind of work all this out and while Chrissy and I adjust to our new lifestyle it's going to be kind of crazy at times I think but um, it's an excited crazy and it's given me something I haven't had in a really long time and that's um, inspiration and motivation uh, to do a job (laughs) Uh, I've not had that in terms of a career um, ever so um since, you know, realizing, realizing I couldn't be a pastor, um, which sounds like a horrible job now. (laughs) I don't think I want it at all. I don't think I ever would have wanted it. I think I was moving away from it anyway, but, um, anyway, thank you all for your patience and understanding. I do apologize for this being such a huge, long, um, update. I didn't intend it to be just turned into that. Um, but I appreciate all of you. The podcast is continuing. It's just going to be kind of sporadic. I look forward to our next interview, whenever that comes, hopefully in the near future. 
Uh, keep in touch. Reach out via Facebook or Twitter. Send me an email, Steve at VOD Podcast. I love hearing from you, and I do read your emails even if I don't get back right away. But I will get back to you. So thanks, everyone, and I hope um, you're having a great new year, and I'll talk to you soon.